From CERN to red heifers and even the most recent eclipse, doomsdayers, date setters, and truthers are all caught making a number of predictions and even claiming that the Large Hadron Collider is being used to open up the bottomless pit mentioned in Revelation chapter 9, while others are pointing to the red heifers and the solar eclipse as a sign of the end of times, or even the pre-tribulation rapture, as we take a look at what is fact and what is fiction concerning these most recent events. Stay with us as we look at these and other stories on the 511 News. Welcome back to the 511 News. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's episode, we're going to be looking at a number of claims that have been made and a number of stories that have been all over the news. And we want to see whether or not, and basically the most important thing, what ultimately lines up with what the scriptures teach. That's going to be the most important thing on this show and any other show that we ever do here at Good Fight Ministries. But before we get into that, we would love for you to like this video, subscribe to the Good Fight Ministries YouTube channel, and if you're listening via podcast, make sure to leave a five-star review, all of those things. And the only reason we mention them is they just help us get up there, leave a comment, whatever you're doing, just so more people can hear the message of the truth of Scripture, especially when we're trying to go through the muddy waters of so many lies that are being stated in the name of Christ. And we are excited to talk about these things because they are important and they're things that really do reflect what's going on around us. And we want to make sure that we're doing things accurately and taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And most recently, one of the things that I found interesting, and this was sent uh, to Josh, our editor here, uh, by a brother from Philadelphia area, and he said, hey, this is really interesting. The comedian Andrew Schultz is actually talking about a lot of these cataclysmic events. People are talking about, hey, there's earthquakes going on on the East Coast when, you know, us here in California are pretty much used to that. There's an eclipse going on, CERN's going on, red heifers are going on, there's still war there in the Middle East. What's going on? Is this stuff end times related? And while a lot of what they were saying had to do uh, with the nature of comedy and, and so forth, and they're trying to be funny. Uh, there are some things that we want to correct because it is always good to deal with what is happening in the public square and make sure it's all being oriented back to the scriptures. And so we want to deal with this, a number of these things. And I thought one of the more important things to touch on, uh, we're going to start with CERN. And when we say a lot of people are saying this, we don't just want to say that without expressing a little bit of like, hey, this is where we're seeing this. So I'm going to go through a number of tweets with you so you can see we're not just making this up. A number of people are looking to these events, pointing to them and saying this is actually what's happening, and it's from the Bible. Here is one from Z Media, and it comes from a screenshot from the Daily Mail that says Americans are suffering from eclipse sickness, including insomnia, headaches, and changes to women's periods. To which she responded, quote, it's called CERN playing God with White Rabbit so they can synchronize the quantum realm in preparation for the AI society and the effect this ultimately has on people. I wish I was joking. Watch my stream on this link in the comments. Or we could look at Flat Earther. Quote, did you know that CERN was built upon the ancient gate to hell that is now closed? And they do point out, and this is true, there is a Shiva statue there. We don't want to give CERN any ability to get out of some of the things. We're like, wait, what is this going on? And it does look like when it comes to CERN, you have a logo that does have 666 on it. But when you're saying that the ancient gate to hell is uh, actually on top of CERN, I I think that is uh, quite ridiculous. Here we have another one. And on this tweet from Donut, or the real Donut, it says, quote, The man who proposed the God particle, which was discovered at CERN, dies on the eclipse when CERN was reactivated and puts a number of different things on there about Peter Higgs, which what was called the God particle or the Higgs bosom. But not only are we seeing these things being stated, some of which I think can be shown on the surface to be inaccurate, 
But actually, people are being called out for this. In fact, Lauren Witzke, and don't get me wrong, this is a weird thing. And what's interesting is even the community notes in it uh, show that there's some weird stuff going on, even if it's not directly related to CERN. As she said here, she quote says, the CERN opening ceremony was so demonic. Why would they perform a Bride of Baphomet seance while opening a scientific lab machine that tries to recreate the quote God particle? I'm sure these people have humanity's best interest in mind as they plan to relaunch on Monday. But some context was added because she was inaccurate. And the context that was added said, quote, this is not the CERN opening ceremony. It is the 2016 opening ceremony for the Gothard Base Tunnel in Switzerland, which at 57 kilometers long is now the world's longest rail tunnel. Now, I will say it's interesting when even the correction shows there's some weird demonic stuff going on in Switzerland. But nonetheless, we want to be accurate in the information we're sharing. It doesn't mean you can be in you're inaccurate and you're a liar all the time. But some people do not care when they're corrected to fix it. And we want to make sure that those things get fixed. But as mentioned before, and I'm going to have Joe back on, uh, Pastor Joe back on later to discuss a little bit more about this bottomless pit idea. But I want to give this out in the forefront so you understand what people are saying about CERN. Because here is one tweet that is talking about the bottomless pit and what is happening or what did happen on April 8th. Quote from Toddy Kins 1. Is CERN trying to open the bottomless pit with their April 8th activation with a reboot schedule for the same day as NASA's APEP mission? At the very time the Devil's Comet shows up, it's obviously ritualistic. APEP is the Egyptian god of chaos symbolized by a snake, interestingly. By the way, there were a number of these things stated prior, I believe it was July 5th in 2022, that this was opening up the bottomless pit and CERN was opening up the bottomless pit. And here is one more before we talk about it a little bit, because Josh who X quotes from Revelation nine, as I saw a star fall from heavens and it was given a key to a bottomless pit. That key is the flaming sword, Lucifer's flaming sword. CERN is trying to replicate it so they can cut through space time and make portals to other realms. April 8th, 2020 opening a portal so guys these are a lot of tweets and statements and videos and all these things being made and applying all this and all of them and, and i want to get why the scriptures prove these to be all false but all of them are taking away the sovereignty of god and really when we're going to get down to it later taking away from the timeline that God has already given us. And he is the one that stands outside of time, space, and matter. He is the one who has shown us in his word how these things are going to look. So watching very, very manipulative videos and statements being made can be very dangerous. And it can not only lead you astray, but you can lead others astray in giving false information and then trying to share Jesus after those things you have stated over and over again have proven to be false. But one of the other things, as I mentioned, we'll be digging into this later, as well as this specific thing. One of the other things that we have seen talked about online by a number of different viewers is the eclipse, that the eclipse that happened. And a lot of these videos, as we'll show, were four days, posted four days prior or a few days prior, or even the day before prior and so forth. When we look at this, a lot of predictions are being made regarding this eclipse, and some of them hedge their bets while others do not. Uh, bringing up Flat Earthers uh, tweets again, they actually posted a minute-long video regarding the rapture and the convergence of two great eclipses like in, by a, in a city called Rapture. Check this out. There was an eclipse that took place seven years ago went right across America. There's another eclipse coming right across America. It'll make a perfect cross on the center of the nation. God made the first sign go through seven cities named Salem on August 21st, 2017. The word Salem, according to Bible, is peace. So God is saying seven times he offered peace. The next eclipse is coming. It goes through several cities here. Nineveh, 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 Nineveh. Jonah gave Nineveh 40 days. 
God said you've got 40 days to repent. Only the sign of John will be shown to you. And that's right here now. Seven and seven. Seven cities called Salem. Seven cities called Nineveh. And seven years apart. Right in the center of the cross is a city called Rapture. What is God's message? We have got 40 days. We've got to repent and seek God like never before. He's coming very, very soon. Another seeming, uh, I guess you'd call him a date setter, is Troy Brewer. Now, I will say this. Uh, before we play this clip, Troy Brewer works with Daystar. And uh, I think anyone that works with Daystar, you could probably need to say they, they do not have good enough insight on the scriptures to be sharing you anything. But nonetheless, Troy Brewer is the founding and senior pastor of Open Church in Burleson, Texas. He is known for his relevant and authentic teaching, amazing insights and studies on the wonders of God, including astronomy, numbers, typology, and times and season. Guys, listen to what he says regarding the eclipse. And is this somebody who you think has amazing insights that you should be looking at for the information? That it actually happens on April the 8th. All right, you know, you know what April 8th is? It's 4-8. Like, okay, 4-8, that's what it is. Why is that a big deal? Because Exodus 4 verse 8 is where God Almighty tell Moses, if they will not hear you and believe you for the first sign, they will for the second. That's extraordinary to me. Again, that was something else that I almost fell down over. Exodus 4 verse 8 says, if they do not believe you or heed my message of the first sign, they may believe the message of the second or the latter sign. And that, that is a 4-8 scripture, friends, and this actually happens on 4-8. <laughs> so I was looking through this, and whenever I first started looking at this, I was like, Lord Jesus, what are you doing? And the Lord told me, Troy, pay attention to where it first enters, to where it first enters in at. And the place where it first enters in at is this place that is called Eagle Pass. Now, Eagle Pass is a very historical place, but not only is it historical in a long time ago, it's actually historical in current events. Have you seen anything in the news about Eagle Pass recently? Now, for all of our Daystar family that's watching all over the planet Earth, you probably wouldn't know that here locally, there's been a tremendous controversy at Eagle's Pass. Boom, there it goes. And friends, whenever it enters in there, again, it's going to go across all, there it is right there. That is Eagle Pass. And whenever this actually takes place, it, I, I know that, I know what, I know what an Eagle Pass is prophetically. If you had a dream and it's like, what, Troy, I saw something called Eagle Pass. I would say, you need to look at Matthew chapter two. I'm oh, sorry, Matthew chapter 24. And it's where Jesus himself is talking about the coming of the Lord. And he's talking about the rapture of the church. And whenever he's talking about the rapture of the church, he calls it where the eagles gather. The last one I want to play and show you regarding just the eclipse and the rapture, the pre-trib rapture specifically, uh, is going to be a clip by John Hagee. And what's sad about this clip, and I want to point this out, what's sad about this clip is not only does he mention that this eclipse is a sign, but it seems like he's hedging his bet in the sense that he's saying it's a sign, but it's a sign to remind people that the rapture is going to take place. But notice how he, manipulative he is that make it seem imminent because of this eclipse, but hedging the bet that, you know what, it's just a sign to point us to the rapture. But also something you want to notice is he's pushing this Blood Moons book. Once again, we're seeing this Blood Moons book being pushed, something that should be shameful to him for the inaccuracies in it, and to watch him push this. But you know what? Something uh, Pastor Joe and I talked about before the show, I guess if you're someone who could leave your wife for your secretary, i.e. John Hagee and Greg Locke as well, uh, you know, if you're somebody who could do that, uh, then being shameful in selling a million copies for something that's completely false, I, I guess it should be not be a surprise. And sadly enough, here he is again pushing another idea of the rapture happening because something that's happening in the sun and the moon and the stars. And sadly enough, as we're going to see later, using scripture out of context uh, and not really, I think, even understanding his own dispensational theology. And he's sending this solar eclipse on April 8th tomorrow to warn the body of Christ to prepare for the rapture of the church. Yeah. 
I wouldn't tell you something that uh, bold if I didn't have a strong Bible foundation for it. And here it is, Luke 21, 25. The Bible says, and there shall be signs in the sun. That's going to be tomorrow. And then there will be signs in the moon. That's the four blood moons that have already happened about which I wrote this book that sold over a million copies in a very short period of time. The four blood moons and the stars. So the sun, the moon, and the stars are in fact celestial evangelists who are trying to communicate to people who read the Bible. The Bible says, then they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. These, now the Bible says, and these things begin to happen. Look up and lift your heads because your redemption draweth nigh. That's what God is saying. Do you have scripture that the heavens are God's billboard? Absolutely. Joel chapter 2 verses 30 and 31 says, I will show you wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. That describes the war that you're seeing on television right now in Israel. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Uh, and the sun shall be turned into darkness. That's going to happen tomorrow. And the moon to blood, the four blood moons that I've talked about. What? Before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. What is the great and awesome day of the Lord? It's the rapture of the church. Lift up your heads because your redemption draweth nigh. The rapture is on the verge of happening. Now, the thing that brings this all together, before I bring Pastor Joe on, the thing that brings this all together is that even the world is bringing this up. And it's not just the eclipse is happening or CERN's doing this, but this idea of the red heifers. And Andrew Schultz actually had a, a discussion there, had a guy on a laptop sharing all the fact finding he did on end times eschatology of, he even brings up Muslims and he brings up uh, Jews and what they believe and so forth regarding the red heifers. And I want you to notice some of the things that he says here, and they are quite interesting. We have had some uh, global uh, events, some cataclysms. Well, not cataclysms, not even close. But we have had some events that might lead to the great cataclysm. The big, beginning event times. Mark has, has done some research about this. Yeah. Mark, can you please fill us in? So basically, the Jews want to build a third temple. Third temple. The first one was... Uh, temple of David. Destroyed by the Babylonians. Babylonians. The next one destroyed by the Romans, I think, or Herod or some 70 AD. Okay. Okay. It's been a long time. They want to rebuild the third one. That will basically usher in their Messiah. They need a red heifer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A red heifer is literally a red cow. Yes. And this is a cow that like has all these super specific things and they need to sacrifice the heifer in order to basically do a ritual ceremony to then purify all the people building the temple and purify all the tools building the temple. Gotcha. And where are they going to build the temple? Great question, no one asked. They're going to build it on the <laughs> Temple Mount. Oh no! And a that's... fight, Sal! <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to punch you! Lights, Lights out! That's basically Get it. Get your hands up! Oh, Go no. on your grill! Oh yeah. no! Because why is that <laughs> tricky? Because the Temple Mount is... Controlled and basically has a mosque on it and controlled by the Muslims in the Middle East. And it has been for a couple well, years. Well, not in the Middle East. It's Jeez. in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, But yeah. in, on the Palestinian side. Now, this site is obviously important for everyone. It's important for Christians. It's important for Muslims, obviously. That's why is where... it important for Christians? I mean, I think it's just one. Jesus Sermon on the Mount, right? Basically, if they rebuild the temple, mm -hmm. evangelical Christians specifically, but I think generally all Christians, I guess, believe that that's when the Messiah will return, when Jesus comes back. So we're kind of, we're kind of like... So evangelicals are in on it. And one of the things that's brought up in those clips is the fact that a spokesperson for the Hamas actually says that they attacked on October 7th specifically because of this idea of red heifers, or he, as he refers to them, red cows. Okay, 
تطبيقا لخرافة دينية مقيتة مصممة للعدوان على مشاعر أمة كاملة في قلب عروبتها ومسرى نبيها ومعراجه إلى السماء That was the 100th day speech uh, brought to you by a Hamas spokesperson Abu Obaida. And what's interesting is there actually are those in the Jewish tradition, uh, specifically after the time of Jesus, who actually point to specifically one of the most respected of all rabbis, and that would be actually the rabbi Maimonides that a lot of people point to. And he actually talks about the very text of Scripture where we can look to in Numbers chapter 19, where it talks about red heifers, and this is his commentary on that. He says, quote, Indeed, in the Chayal, they would put away for safekeeping a portion of the ashes from every red heifer that was burnt. Nine red heifers were offered from the time that they were commanded to fulfill this mitzvah until the time when the temple was destroyed a second time. This was brought by Moses, our teacher. The second was brought by Ezra. Seven others were offered until the destruction of the second temple. And the tenth will be brought by the king of Mashiach, or Messiah. May he speedily be revealed. Amen. So may it be God's will. Now, one of the other things that is brought out, which I find that to be really interesting, and as I mentioned, for the more prophetic things, we're going to bring on Pastor Joe here in just a minute. But one of the other things that I wanted to talk to Joe about as well is this idea that it is Christians who want to bring this on. And so Jews and Christians are really aligned in this idea of bringing on the Third Temple. And we have played videos in the past about Greg Locke actually talking about how uh, basically what's going on in Palestine uh, or what they call Palestine. Uh, actually, they need to be t- turned into glass so that we can bring on the Third Temple and uh, fire up the rapture. And so we kind of see this methodology and this kind of uh, this thing going on, and the fact that it was evangelicals who made these red heifers in Texas and then want to send them to the Temple Institute there in Israel. And I want to talk about that because I want to get down to the concept of our Christians, is it our duty as Christians? It's one thing for Jews to believe that their Messiah is going to come, as Maimonides has expressed, that all nine have already been killed, but the, the tenth that's going to be killed is going to happen uh, there in Israel. It's going to be the Messiah that actually lays the red heifer to death there. But I want to bring Joe on because I want to talk about specifically, should Christians be the ones ushering in this third temple to bring about the rapture or anything else? Somebody hope get this message to Benjamin Netanyahu that he ought to take care of the rest of them yahoos. Now, I'm going to tell you what would fix it right now. By the way, it'd fix it, and it would help usher in what we're wanting so bad. Huh? While they're mowing down the Gaza Strip and letting them terrorists know exactly what we do with terrorists, which is not compromise or negotiate, what they ought to do is evacuate up there on the hill and get a great big missile and blow that wicked dome of the rock plumb off of the spot where it's standing right now so we can get that third temple rebuilt and usher in the coming of Jesus. So we have Pastor Joe on here now because I I think that clip is really, really interesting and and it does get into our philosophy of understanding of Scripture and also the end times because you're listening to Greg Locke specifically say, like, we need this to happen so we can usher it in so this can happen. And then I'm hearing on Andrew Schultz's show that everyone's on on board for this in terms of we want to make sure that Third Temple comes and even that it was evangelical Christians who are the ones who made, so to, you know, quote unquote, the red heifers in order to be sacrificed. So, Joe, should Christians be helping? Ultimately, I, I guess there's no other way to say it. Should Christians be helping to usher in the Antichrist? That's a great question, uh, Chad. The Antichrist is actually a judgment uh, that God brings upon the world of wrath for those who receive not the love of the truth they're given a strong delusion to believe the lie it's a judgment of god uh what we're supposed to be doing uh, which does also herald his coming is preach the gospel we're supposed to be rescuing people out of the fire not sending missiles and starting fires we're supposed to be snatching them out of the fire uh jesus gave us the marching orders the great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all the nations you know and baptizing the, name of the father son and the holy spirit teach them to observe everything that he's commanded us so we've been given our marching orders been given the great commission uh and yes there'll be events of god's wrath but that's because people rejected the gospel 
They rejected God's good news that we're called. That's what we're called to do. Mm-hmm. We're called to bring people to Christ, a saving knowledge of Christ, save a relationship and disciple them and build the church until Christ comes. So it's really heartbreaking that he's getting all th- things all twisted up and he's getting political. And he's even, I mean, you know, when you start saying, hey, let's torch these guys, it reminds me of a scripture uh, where Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you're of. Yeah. You know? Yeah, sons of thunder, right? Amen, yeah. amen. And and Joe, I want to I want to just you know change course. It's not really it's all the same talk here, but you know how do we know specifically because of the Bible? And we didn't I you know I didn't get to touch on it earlier because I really wanted people to see like these are this is what people believe. How do we know because of the Bible specifically that CERN did not open the bottomless pit on in April or two years ago or at any other time. Man, Chad, we know for several reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, you would see the effect of the trumpet that they're talking about being blown, uh, the fifth trumpet. You'd see the effects of it. You'd see people getting stung with scorpions, these demonic type creatures, and not being able to die and wanting to die for five months because they're under God's wrath. We'd be seeing that that would be taking place. That's not taking place right now. Plus, you're talking about you know the first several seals being completed, the first you know, four trumpets would have have to already been blown, which when you look at the book of Revelation, that hasn't even happened yet. Uh, and that's really clear when we look at the book of Revelation. We look at the first trumpet, which happens before the fifth trumpet. We look at the first trumpet. What you see is hail and fire cast the earth, and a third of the earth is burned up. Hmm, has that happened? Look at the second trumpet. We look at the second trumpet, you see a great mountain of probably a huge kind of asteroid or something like that crashing into the earth where a third of the sea creatures and a third of the ships are destroyed. Then when you look at the third trumpet, you see wormwood, the star wormwood hit the earth. You see a third of the rivers polluted because of wormwood. And then when you see the fourth trumpet, you see a third of the celestial bodies being darkened. So you won't be able to see a third of the sun, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars. Uh, and certainly that hasn't happened yet, Chad, because I've, I just saw the sun. And, and that, in fact, you know what? That was related to the eclipse. And we can still see the whole sun right now. So we still see the whole moon. So none of these events have happened yet. So and it breaks my heart. It's all, it would be laughable if it wasn't so, it's a joke. It is laughable, but it would be, but it's also incredibly sad because all these people are being deceived, you know, all the eclipse and it's related to CERN and, and that's why you're, you're not having your period and so forth. It's like, no, it's far more serious than that. We're talking about demonic locusts being unleashed on the earth, Chad, and that hasn't happened yet. And people, they get millions of clicks, some of these, are, oh, know, yeah, hundreds absolutely. of thousands, for preaching lies. And it just breaks my heart that you have things like this getting pushed when we have the truth of God's word. And praise God, I mean, the Lord said that knowledge would increase in the end times and people would go to and fro. And that is, if you look at Re- Revelation or Daniel's to say, chapter 12, that's related to searching the truth and searching the scripture. And the wicked will, inc- will get worse and worse and so forth, but the righteous will shine like the stars of heaven. And so, praise God, there's shows like this. There's people that earnestly are sincere about the Scripture and are, are we're able to, you know, rightfully divide the word of truth. And we're glad we have an audience that really loves truth. Hey Amen. I, and I think it'd be great, too. Uh, if you guys didn't know, there's a couple of resources that we can give you. We can put in the link in the description. One of that is a Racing Through Revelation video where Pastor Joe actually goes through the entire book of Revelation in one hour, which was really, really awesome for people that just kind of want the forest, uh, you know, rather than each individual tree. But if you do want that tree, you can go to our Blessed Hope Chapel See Me page and you can actually check out an entire series in the book of Revelation. Our church has gone through it. Pastor Joe's gone through it specifically two different times, the book of Revelation verse by verse. But this last one, Joe, what was it, seven years? Uh, First one was seven years. I'm not sure exactly how long the second This is a while. Uh, But but if you want to get, you can have the forest if you want or the trees. We want to offer that to you guys. That's all obviously for free, all of our, on our website for you guys to to check out and hopefully you'll be blessed by that. And so Joe, I want to, I want to finish off with this one because um, John Hagee uh, is a popular teacher, specifically down in Texas. Uh, we, you know, we have a, a little uh, sister church that we're, we're building up there, uh, Home Fellowship right now uh, in Bulverde, which is not far. And they are affected a lot by the teachings that come out. And a lot of people are affected by the false teachings that have come out. Uh, the teaming up with Bethel, Chris Valatin being great friends yeah. with Matthew Hagee and, uh, you know, them having uh, the Beveers come and speak and so forth. You're just like, what is going on there? But also, Joe, whether it's his Blood Moon book that he pushed, whether it's the fact that he did leave his wife for his secretary and remain in the pastorate, 
And then now you have an, a video going out and being shared that this eclipse is a sign of the rapture taking place. And I want to read from the scriptures that he quotes. I'm going to read from them right mm -hmm. now. Luke chapter 21, starting at verse 25. There will be signs in sun and moons and stars and on the earth dismay among nations in perplexity at the roaring of the seas and the waves, men fainting from fear and the expectation of the things which are coming upon the world for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these things begin to take place, straighten up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Joe, he also quotes from Joel as well. And, and these are, you know, the blood moons already leading to this eclipse. And here it is. The rapture is right there. Uh, it's And like I said, I, I think he hedges his bets and says, well, they're just signs of the rapture that's supposed to come. And most rapture teachers that I know, preacher rapture teachers that I know say there's supposed to be no signs before that, yeah. ultimately, uh, when it comes to the rapture, because it takes place seven years prior to the second coming, even though it's kind of a coming because he's coming on the clouds, which, you know. So really a second, it, third coming. Second teaching. and third coming. But Joe, I, I think this is important because, you know, we posted recently about uh, some of our views on eschatology and when we believe the Bible teaches uh, the Lord will return. And a lot of people get dismayed. Oh, wait, what? There's no pre-trib rapture. This is what I've always been taught, even though it wasn't in the church for 1,800 years. People in modern times, specifically in the West, are like, whoa, this is what I've yeah. always been taught. Correct. So when we read those sorts of scriptures and we're trying to understand them in light of what actually is going on, and don't get me wrong, the same person who was posting about the rapture taking place, the flat earther, a guy on Twitter, was also posting about the bottomless pit being open right now. And, yeah. and so you're like, well, what on earth is going yeah. on? So how do we kind of decipher this? And how do we look at Luke 21, Matthew 24, Mark 13, First and Second Thessalonians, right? The book yeah. of Revelation. How do we look at all this and say, this is where we can recognize the fig tree. This is where we can recognize the epochs, the times, and, and so forth, without being date setters and without being somebody that's saying, oh, this is going to be the rapture taking place at the eclipse. No, and you make some great questions with great points along the way uh, because it's very convoluted. On one hand, they want it to be a signless pre-trib rapture, and it's different than the second coming. He, The first time he comes, you know, the second time he comes is, you know, the first time he came was to atone for our sins. Second time he comes is to come and then rapture us, and the third time he comes in judgment. The Bible doesn't teach a first, second, third coming. The Bible says, uh, it's the point of man wants to die, but after this judgment that he appeared the first time reference to our sin, but a second time reference to our salvation, first and second coming, not first, second, and third coming. Uh, and as Chad noted, you know, you mentioned that that hasn't been in the church uh, for 1,800 years that wasn't taught. Uh, I think that's important to keep in mind. But it's interesting, it gets so convoluted because they want to take, oh, this is CERN, this is the fifth trumpet, but we're pre-trib, or this is the... Uh, this is these are signs of his the, the pre-trib rapture, uh, Hagee, but he's taking tribulation events mentioned in, Math, in Luke 21. Luke 21, Mark 13, Matthew 24, they're all what we call the Olivet Discourse. Uh, Jesus talking about the tribulation period that would end up, that would lead to the, his second coming. And what's fascinating, Chad, is, and they have to do that because every time you see the second coming, it is the second coming. So have to take, they have to take second coming scriptures and say, oh, but this is a pre-trib rapture seven years earlier. The problem is, whenever they do that, so often there's a time signature that shows it's post-trib. And that's no different than what he just did with Luke 21. Because when you look at Luke 21, and he quotes the Son of, Son of Man coming in power, he's pretending that that is the pre-trib rapture. I shouldn't say he's pretending. I don't know his motives. Okay, He's had a jaded life character and everything else. But maybe he's sincerely deceived. But he's saying, hey, that's the pre-trib rapture. Luke 21 isn't talking about a pre-trib rapture, folks. Luke 21 is the Olivet Discourse where Jesus talks before that, when you put it with Matthew 24 and Mark 13, though the, the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place, which is the rebuilt uh, temple, right? And then Jesus says specifically in Matthew 24, which is the parallel passage to Luke 21 and Mark 13, he says immediately after Luke chapter, Matthew 24, verse 29, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened. Ooh, there's a sign. The moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven. Uh, and he says, the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they'll see the Son of Man come in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, which is what he quoted from Luke 21. But uh, And then he'll gather his elect, it says, with the great sound of the trumpet, he'll gather his elect and so forth. That's the rapture. But Jesus said it's immediately after the tribulation. So he's, he's convoluting the passage and trying to make it look like it's a separate coming when he should know, 
as a Bible teacher that Luke 21 is the Olivet Discourse and speaking of the second coming of Christ immediately after, which is post-trib, not pre-trib. And Chad, the other thing we need to say about this is uh, he keeps saying in that clip that you played, he says more than once that, you know, this is the ter- this is the great day of the Lord. This is bringing in the great day of the Lord as though the great day of the Lord is the pre-trib rapture. And a lot of pre-tribs say, well, the the, the, tri- tri- the tribulation is the day of the Lord, and it's seven years long. It starts with the pre-trib rapture. The problem is, is all these events that they often talk about come before the great day of the Lord. These events that they talk about that are signs of his return or what have you happen before the rapture. We can prove from Scripture that the tribulation event itself, the seven-year period or the great tribulation period, the last three and a half years, is not the day of the Lord, but the events that take place during that period of time, the tribulation period, precede the day of the Lord, which indeed, they're right, is the rapture. Uh, that, then the rapture comes, but it's the day of the Lord at the end. In fact, here's the scriptures. When we look at Acts chapter 2, for instance, uh, look at Acts chapter 2, verse 20. Uh, we read in Acts chapter 2, verse 20, about uh, you know the, the sun being darkened and the moon turned to blood and so forth. We read that also in Joel uh, chapter 2, uh, verses 28, 29, 30, 31. Specifically talking about the you know uh, moon being turned to blood, sun being darkened before the great and terrible day of the Lord. That shows you that these events happen before the day of the Lord. And the order that you asked me the questions, Chad, today are perfect because we've already shown that part of the events that take place under the trumpets before the great terrible day of the Lord, there's already a darkening of the sun and the moon and so forth. These are the events that we're looking for during the tribulation period, not these supposed blood moons. By the way, he cherry picks the blood moons. He has this book on these four blood moons. And he says, oh, look, there were blood moons and these events took place. Well, guess what? Events did take place. What he does do is he ignores all these other blood moons where no events took place and acts like these were the blood moons when there's several blood moons. And he cherry picks it to make it look prophetic when the scriptures are actually speaking of tribulation events that will take place that will herald, which people ought to be looking for, uh, the second coming of Christ. By the way, Chad, the scriptures mention several ver- several things uh, that herald the day of the Lord that actually take place during the tribulation. Again, proving the Lord's return at the day of the Lord, at the rapture, is at the very end of the tribulation period. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, it talks about the rapture. And in chapter 5, he says that there's no need that Paul writes to them because it's going to come like a, a thief in the night. And he says that they'll be saying peace and safety. He says, before the day of the Lord. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul says concerning Christ coming and being gathered together to him. That day won't take place. He calls it the day of the Lord until the fallen away happens first and the Antichrist is revealed. In other words, after the Antichrist. Chad, in fact, the Schofield Reference Bible. It, this is the main Bible that popularized the pre-trib rapture. Even Schofield admits in his notes that these events take place before the tribulation period. Uh, He states, and I I quote him, The day of the Lord is preceded by seven signs, the sending of Elijah, Malachi 4, 5, cosmical disturbances, the apostasy of the professing church, the manifestation of the man of sin, the beast. So that caused a lot of problems for pre-tribs because he's admitting that the day of the Lord actually doesn't happen until all these events take place first, showing that the rapture is actually post-tribulational. Hey Amen. And all these things are important. And the reason why we want to talk about it is because Jesus specifically mentioned in Matthew 24, the Olivet Discourse that Pastor Joe has talked about a number of times in this very discussion, he said that many people's love will grow cold, but he who endures till the end shall be saved. People are going to see lawlessness increasing. There'll be false prophets. There'll be those performing many signs and wonders, which is interesting. You got pre-trib rapture teachers, and then you have the NAR, you know, coming together. You know, like, how will this all coincide? There's going to be a great falling away. We're not worried about the great never was. We're concerned about those who would fall away and that their love would grow cold. And we don't want that for you guys. We want to make sure that you guys understand that Jesus is the fulfillment of the red heifer, ultimately. When it comes to Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 13, we see Jesus outside of the camp, the same thing it says, and it points that was the one. He was the one who was taken outside of the camp and made sacrifice for us. And if you don't know him right now, you see all these signs, everything going on, and what was the craziness? Where do I find it right? You're going to find it in Scripture, but ultimately you're going to find, find salvation, which is a quote from Joel, Joe, when we talk about it. Yeah. In Romans chapter 10, 9 through 13, it says, Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ, not only that he's Lord, but that he rose again. He died for your sins, according to 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 15 uh, 1 through 4. Died for your sins, according to the scriptures. He rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. And guess what? All who call on the name of 
Yahweh. Jesus is Yahweh. Mm. All who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's from Joel 2.32. And guess what? It's a promise of salvation for anyone who would come to him. Praise this God. from Pastor Joe and Chad, and this is the 511 News. Thank you guys so much for watching 511 News. You can check out some of the older episodes as well as the Good Fight Radio Show and videos we have right here on our YouTube channel. And this week's featured product is The Submerging Church. You can check this out at goodfight.org. God bless you guys.